elsewhere. And, yeah. And we are live with Brad Hanna. Yeah. Um, so like I was I was just thinking to myself one day, man, about gatekeeping, you know, gatekeeping. gatekeeping. And I think that it's kind of like predominant in any industry you you go into, but specifically construction. And it's basically a good example of that. It's like an old, old timer, you know, you're on the site, the old timers there, he's just ripping it up. And you're like, hey man, how do you do that? He's like, 10 years of experience, keep practicing, right? He's gatekeeping, right? He's keeping his secrets. Or I've never heard of this. Or there's an old guy on the site and uh, he sees someone over there struggling. And that person might be having the time of their life thinking they're doing the best shit ever. And he's over in the corner with the other three guys just cutting him up. It's gatekeeping. It's not helping anything. It's the cool kid's table. <laughs> it's the cool kid's table. Yeah. Absolutely, right? And essentially, that's what I had done to you, yeah. right? Yeah. Because yeah. not many people know, but I we've known one another for about six years, maybe yeah. seven years, yeah. way before Instagram. And... um you know me like i'm just like i love you you know i love you and even before my new life philosophy is like yeah if you don't have anything nice to say you should just not say anything especially to your homies right and as you know uh you know i, I was like super super mean to you um for a couple of days weeks months maybe but it was more passive aggressive right so yeah. it was like yeah and um no i you know i'll tell you sean like i i obviously i we we haven't spoken in like a year yeah pretty and much, so yeah. i obviously have done a lot of soul searching with a lot of things in my life since coming to god but um that was one that really you know i've told a lot of people to fuck off with vindication and i have no remorse because right. of that but there's a few people obviously and so that one really hit a accord with me and i realized that i was gatekeeping because you were even though i had known you for a long time you were a, a new someone coming someone new coming into finishing you were obviously extremely enthusiastic about it and for all that i know this may have been the first trade or whatever that you felt comfortable enjoyed and you felt like this sense of self-worth like fuck like i'm good at something man yeah like for once, I'm not saying that's what happened to you. Yeah, that's yeah. what happened to me in finishing. That is the dream. Right. Yeah. And it's like, oh man, like uh, this is awesome. And you may have seen a, a finisher, more experienced finisher. And you're like, hey, his work's good. And then all of a sudden this guy comes over and just starts shitting on you. And now you go from this like, like really cool vibe where I like this scene to like, oh shit. It's like this, like everywhere else. You know what I mean? And that's a huge digression in the trades. And it's a, it's a systemic problem. It's like I said to you, the Instagram finishers, in my opinion, are 0.00005%, right? But it's like the pigeon down the, the mine shaft. You can still get a gauge on what the global consensus is on, on things yeah. through Instagram. Right. Um, however, it, 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 it happens a lot. And I... I was probably like the chief gatekeeper and it's just an old school way uh, of doing things. And I mean, I, like I said to you, I think that that is, is digressing social media anyways. Most, most comment sections in construction are super derogatory, racist. They're horrible. It's all yeah. filled with hate. Yeah, it's terrible. Right. Eventually people just stop right now. It's mostly our generation who are doing the construction things to older people. It's not really 20 year olds, but that generation is a lot more in touch with kindness, right. being sensitive and eventually it's just going to fizzle and fade away uh, if things don't change. You know what I mean? And I mean, I definitely don't want to be uh, part of that because there's no need to gatekeep anything. Like if you have complete confidence in your coat, so to speak, or you have confidence in your craft, mm -hmm. then you should be hyped to like um, help people and uplift people and make them feel that same sense of accomplishment that they may never have. Maybe they won't get it from anywhere else, you know? There's a certain sense of like protecting the craft that I think probably goes along with that or it's like... And it's your right to passage too, isn't it? Yeah, a little bit. But yeah, no, it definitely is. It's just like, well, I had to do this, so this fucker should have to do this shit too. Well, I, I was such an ass, man. Oh, it was. It made my life a lot easier though. Instead of having to like copy and paste big long explanations about 
uh, questions people have about particular tools or even new releases is just, just really practice. Yeah. It's, Which is not bad. It's not really helping anybody <laughs> though, especially when it needs to practice, right? right? Especially when you mean it's particular. Not. Hey, um, what type of flat box handle do you use? Practice. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, and so it's like being this like ultra purist and it's just not the way it is. And when we were chatting before I said to you, it's like, I obviously, uh, yeah, one of my hobbies and something that I, I really like is skateboarding. Yeah. That's pretty dope. mainly because I suck at it and it's nice to have something that, you know, and I love the history behind it. And I love the whole, I just like what happened from my generation like 2001, you're driving around everywhere you look, people are riding double kicks. doesn't matter where you are. Right. People are just, just ripping shit up and then it just you know the newer generations came in and just kind of evaporated yeah and it, that made me think about how gatekeeping and when i was i was reading this book it was like a book of the history of like skateboarding like the 80s or into the into the uh 2020s and kind of the demise <clears throat> And it reminded me of that so much because I specifically remember being a young kid and I was never good at skateboarding. And like, like you said, there were the cool kids yeah. and you kind of be like really shy to try something, even if you kind of knew you could do it yeah. because these kids were going to gatekeep you. It's like, if you can't do yeah. kickflip, nose grind and this and that, yeah, you're a poser or yeah. whatever. And it's like, you know what, guys, I'm just not going to try this shit. This yeah. crowd's not for me. And who knows, maybe that person would the next, uh, you know, Rodney Mullen, who knows, maybe they had that potential in them or who knows maybe if that person got on they'd be able to help these other people and that's exactly what happened to skateboarding yeah. and it's exactly why it's not the industry that it once was i mean it's big but it's not the same and um yeah that like tony hawk era it's tony hawk pro skater 99 yeah man that was like that was it right so and there's so many like there's so many parallels that you can draw between the skateboarding scene, especially the early 2000s and uh, like the, I call it the drywall internet, right? But the drywall internet, right? The drywall scene. And um, like, I'm pretty sure. <clears throat> and uh, at some point or another, I heard an, uh, an interview with Aaron from Columbia, who, if anybody doesn't know, they're the main reason why there is the community yep. and why there is an influencer program and why a lot of people have gotten a lot of these opportunities and then obviously a lot of the companies uh, replicated it because it was so good for the industry but they were really the one the first ones to to buy in or to invest i'm sorry yeah to invest in it and um i mean they've been rewarded because of it you know that biggest brand recognition in my opinion in north america right now and as far as i'm concerned they're selling more more tools in canada than anybody you know not that canada is a huge market but whatever yeah um and i saw this interview with him or this whatever they were doing a, one of the videos they used to do and they were talking about the brand and this video probably came in 2019 and he says it right in the video growing up i saw kids they're from vancouver so i don't know if he said snowboarding or skateboarding yeah, yeah. i saw kids getting sponsored and stuff and i thought it would be cool to give back to the community you know partner up with some of the, these people and start to build this thing and they did it exactly the way skate skateboarders, they say, you know, amateur skateboarder, he goes on flow first. So he's just going to get one thing or sorry. They, 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 Hey, you're really good. Here's a deck. Yeah. yeah he yeah. keeps doing it. Then he goes on flow. Hey, here's two decks a month and so on and so forth. I don't, I don't have to explain it. Yeah. Either, right. <clears throat> and that's exactly what they did with the brand ambassador program. And it became like my, my, brand ambassador year it was 2019 and it was only for two months <laughs> but but um what it what it was i mean hey i made the most of those two months you know what i'm saying but what it was was they were very performance based yeah. right and um the expectation i don't know what it was for you but the expectation was very high it was like four picture posts and three videos and i'd never done a video i'm like oh, i can't do this shit right but i ended up doing it anyways yeah and um they're performance based so you know if you are going to invest in columbia tools your time they're going to invest in you and i saw so many people fade out just like you you've seen a lot of skaters who will go on floor or whatever and then fade out right and so the parallel is super interesting to me because i like both whatever you want to call it scenes or subcultures and um, 
you can learn something from that story, the demise of skateboarding, because it will never be what it was. Right. It's popular, never be where it was, right? And you can kind of you can kind of learn something from that. Now, drywall is, uh, you know, drywall is that industry is 10 million times bigger than skateboarding ever would be. But again, it's the same analogy of the pigeon, pigeon down the mine shaft. I feel as though like I've been used as the pigeon in, in my career. Hey, um, give Brad one of these, you know, he'll, you know, tell us it's shit or not. Or, hey, let's give him one of these. We'll sell at least three of them. You know, if you, is, you know, I feel like they've gauged that off of me at times. Uh, um, no, man, it's uh, in in the next five years, there's going to be so many, so many young people using these tools because of all this work that's been going on, not just on social media, but just in general, you know, especially even back to the old drywall talk forms. Like this has just like been the perfect brewing storm. There's been literally hundreds of personalities who have came and gone and done their thing. People who've popped up who have like slowly been working together in not in like indirectly to push it where it, now it's just like, I was in CSR yesterday and there was like in the matter of like 20 minutes, like three people bought shit. I'll take a pump of five, but this, that, and the other thing. And it's been incredible. I love to see that because, you know, it's uh, like Wolfgang says, when one of us wins, we all win. We all win. And I think that's also something super centric to us. Typically, like at the end of the day, Sean, you know, I uh, am a piece working drywall finisher. You, you, I, you're, a, you're a drywall finisher. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're competition. We really should be. Yeah. And anybody else out there, like, I mean, this is just, this is the way it is. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. That's capitalist, a very capitalistic way of looking at things. I'm competition with you. Uh, we shouldn't collaborate, right? We should, we should, we should, we shouldn't do any of these things because I want to gatekeep what I know. That's right. And fuck you. You, you know what I mean? Uh, and finishers don't really do that, do they? You know, I work with Wes for four or five years, yeah. man, and it's like there's this 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 is really weird uh, symbiotic thing that finishers have and i feel as though from 2019 to about 2022 everybody 2021 a lot of people lost touch of that yeah the big competition you know who can get the most opportunity not necessarily who can get the most who can get the most checks who can get the most yeah it's just who can get who who can really make the most of this 2019 yeah. brand ambassador who's gonna win thing. and now can you imagine if like aaron and mark they probably do this and we don't know this. Yeah. They're just over there in BC just designing the three-way tool and none of us know. Imagine if those guys started working together, right? They they want all of us to work together, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Lord. But yeah, no. Um I uh I think it's really really important for um people who have uh experience to to instead of gawk into gatekeep i think it's super duper important um to to try and try and uplift these people and i've had experiences i told you when we were having a smoke when i was having a smoke i've had people come back to me two three years or i don't even remember these people they'll message me hey remember that diagram you made about the butt joint man that like that's was really all that i needed to see i already had 95 percent of it right i just needed that and that literally i remember when i made that because i got a bunch of messages about that one oh, man no one ever explained it to me like that and that's really just all some people need and what did that take me i was sitting in my garage chain smoking cigarettes yeah. and i did this doodle thing and that was that like it's this isn't like you know there was no need to gatekeep um you're a fantastic teacher too like to break something down and and have a discussion about it you're very good at breaking things down to a very simple... that word you're looking for is articulation Yard and i will tell you who yeah. taught me that word because i remember when yeah. i learned that word okay. elliot aaron's brother yeah uh said something similar to what you said to me and he said brad you're very good at articulating things to people uh-huh uh, and I was like, oh, thanks, Elliot. Literally got off the phone, Googled that shit right away. Yeah. What does this mean? I was like, I love that word, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I think I've just been fucked around by so many idiots that I have to come up with four different ways to angle it to them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Maybe. Are you, are, does this thing beeping when we swear? Like when I swear, does it beep? <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs>
Just keep talking. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know that Jesus would really approve this. Okay, he doesn't listen to that. <laughs> Neither did I, so you're right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think that's what's so important about kind of this community that we're pushing. Sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before we move on to the, okay. we move away from the gay key. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm genuinely curious, and to put you on the spot, uh -oh. did you feel, um, I wasn't the only one, you know, I told you before, I remember when you first got on, people were talking about you. Oh, yeah. Nobody knew that how tight we were. Yeah. Nobody knew you were like at my house the night before. We drank a two four. And then we walked to the beer store to get a 12 pack. That was a good night. That drank all that podcast that night. Yeah. I woke up and like fucking, where is he? Yeah. And I fell ripped off. <laughs> yes. I am mature in the night. If I stay if I sleep over, if it's not in my truck and I'm in your But I'm genuinely curious. Yeah. Um, because you know how tight we were. Uh well, I would like to think we we still are. Um, but like how, how like someone that you know you someone that was your friend that had been doing the thing you were getting into a lot longer than you and i i supported you up until that i don't think yeah. that i ever discouraged you what sure. it was like fucking like was that like hey he's right was that like this fucking has nothing to do with me he's probably just having a bad day because he's a spaz sometimes like well where was it a mix of everything did you it was look? a big mix of everything oh because okay. it was like where the fuck did that come from you know what i mean yeah and then you reach out to a couple of people but then just to predicate we've never had an argument before never it's seven years right never um so like when it was out of left field like that a little bit i don't know it was like Yeah, it was hard to it was hard to grip. It was a bunch of emotions because it was like, you know, am I doing that? You know? Yeah. Like, like, fuck. Is that legitimately what's happening right now? If it wasn't for the fact that I had already made the decision to be taping full time and I was just finding that first sight, it would have been a different story. A bit of a like wake up. Yeah. Yeah, I think after Vegas, we had those moments where it was like... So here's a question for you. Sorry. Yeah. Here's a question for you. So before that, um, had you... At before, so you're doing your thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't need to regurgitate or talk about it. You're doing your thing. <clears throat> you're not looking for the jobs right now, but you're doing your thing. At any point in time, did it ever cross your mind where I fucking need to... Or no? Like... So when you when you started doing your thing, yeah, come yeah. on Instagram. Yep. Did I? You weren't full time taping at the time. Did you have full intentions of getting there? Oh yeah. At some point. Yeah. I right. had to make sure that I could make the money to to bail. Right. Oh. Like doing this like super stuff pays a lot of money. Yeah. Right. And then you get used to that. You get the bills of that. You got it's a kid, payroll. You got everything. Right. right? So yeah, I had to know that I was going to be able to do it before yeah. I went and did it. Like, at what time? So. I had basically no, like, oof, I remember when you came on, it would have been around the time that I was leaving a relic group. 20, yeah. It would have been right around the time. Are you, you, you were working with them for a bit and then you had dipped and you're doing sting, from that to do, like, sit, super work. And, um, and then so you get on and you're like, fuck it, I'm going to be a taper. When, when finance, when I financially, re when I can be responsible and do it responsibly, I'm not just going to jump shit. Yeah. And so me and you know me, like during that journey, I was just like I didn't say shit to you. I didn't ask. You. I was not encouraging you by any means, aside from coming. I'd be like keep doing your thing, but I wasn't like I was definitely not uh, supporting you. But I wasn't not supporting you either. So when I say something like that to to someone like you. You're just like, fuck this guy. I'm going to do that shit anyways. What the fuck does he know? You know what I mean? And actually, in fact, yeah, I think I during that... To... <laughs> you know what I mean? It was like, if, like okay. Because I think during that, during me, during me ranting to you about that, during that, you weren't really arguing with me. It was just me, like yeah. verbal diarrhea. Right? Yeah. I think you said that. I think you did. And then I was just like, 
Oh, fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Lord. So, so at the very, at the, so I would say, um, you already, what I was thinking, you were already thinking. You're like, I have to fuck. I like I just gone to Vegas. So now, now in retrospect, for me, this is what I would, this is what I see. Yeah. You're a smart guy. Like, you're not just going to jump from here to there, especially when you have a great, you had, uh, you have a better job now because yeah. it's working out, but you had a fantastic job. Oh, big time. Right. And um, now in retrospect, right now in retrospect, um, perhaps that was like a, like affirmation for you to go and fucking tape I know, like you said i better fucking do it now right there kind of was this how about this i don't know i'm having a hard time articulating did you think that someone was going to call you out um you knew you were going to tape anyway so it's not like you went into this with malicious intent not trying to trick anybody yeah you knew you but i'm sure there came a point and it obviously was at that point because you started doing it, it was like yeah. i like it I'm here. I'm doing it. You. It's not as if you weren't fucking doing anything with it. Yeah. Right. You were yeah. doing it, but it wasn't a full time thing. A couple of hours a year. Right. right. Yeah. It, became, it was a hobby. Right. Yeah. Hobby's a good word for it. And then you went for it. I and then, it. and then I'm just like this fucking guy. Like, oh my god, your name would come up, and I would be like, yeah, no, this guy. Um, because I, you know, I did apologize to you shortly after, yeah. and you weren't having it, and yeah. I don't fucking blame you. Yeah. Um, but um. Then, like, uh, yeah, like I said to you, man, like, uh, I uh, was, like, super hyped. I would, like, watch your shit a little bit yeah. last few months from afar. I was super-duper hyped to see it, and I was like, this fucking guy did it. I was so proud of you because I know you did it by yourself. Yeah. It wasn't as if, like, you had somebody there, like, hey, okay, this is how you do it here and do it there. I know that, like, you ate shit, and you have a lot of responsibilities in your life, just like most of us, and that, if you can do that, the beginning, <clears throat> jumping ship, is the hardest thing you ever have to do, man. Yeah. Because I jumped ship when I was 30-something, uh, 30, 30 early 30s, 31, and it's the hardest, everyone's going to think, you, I'm sure you got it, everyone's going to think you're fucked, you have no support, nothing, you're into it. Your homie, who actually knows a thing or two, isn't even supporting yeah, you, yeah, right? Exactly. It is one of the hardest things. But if you can make it to the point where you've made it, just based on your pictures, you know, I, I've been around, I've seen enough people's work to know that if you, on your, you know something, you're not an yeah. idiot, you know, not you, anyone in general. Yeah, yeah. And, and um, if you can get to the point that you've gotten to, which is the hardest point, I think it's the point that everybody, uh, most people just fizzle away and fade away anyone put it this way anybody can do three or four jobs yeah anybody can and it takes you uh about five years to get a super sweet reputation as a craftsman but it takes two jobs to lose it so totally. and that's why a lot of people fade away but to get to this point is the hardest the, it's the hardest it's the hardest part that most people can't get and that's why i so hyped because i know you and i doubted you mm -hmm. and like i said to you there in the kitchen like i there was i was like no man and I was wrong. And like I said to you in the kitchen, it's it's nice to be wrong for once. Like, I'm sick and tired of always being right about this drywall shit. You know? Unreal, man. Unreal. Someone's like, yeah, Sean. Six years. He's so Sean's going to be a taper. Like, how? <laughs> He's a fucking man giant. You like, you kind of want to be a little bit more crossfitty. Yeah. And like we were saying about boxing bead, holy smokes! When I'm boxing bead, because for me it's my uh, it's my shoulders, my arms, mm -hmm. my biceps, and and my, I got pretty hard, pretty good hands, yeah, pretty strong hands just from breaking all the years. But that's ooh yeah, I like a I'm like I'm like 150 pounds. I'm just sweating my ass off after I'm after I do the beads, man. It's yeah. you're dumping a lot of mud, right? Yeah, I need to get that little tool, the little double handle. Yeah, yeah, it's. Uh, I I think. Uh, fuck, what do I have? I have a. I have a. Sh you know that? Oh no, they got a cease and desist. Tape Pro got a cease and desist on that. It's, so it's the wizard one. I. It's good. Peep. I shit on it in the beginning. It's yeah. good. It's yeah. good. Because like I was saying, you get that squeezy action. Yeah. Yeah, man. That whole um, 
everybody's in competition thing is is going away this new this new group of guys and girls are it's working you know yeah well it's like we we were saying before you know 2019 and before that it wasn't as popping so to speak and 2019 came on and for me i mean i other different people might tell you different things but no it was definitely a bit of a competition you know what this is a lot like the the comedy scene where everybody used to be going for sitcoms there were only so many and that's how it was and everybody was fucking each yeah other over. if you got a sitcom you made it yeah and then so now it's all that community everybody pumps each other up and then the whole scene rises kind of thing and it's i'm i don't know that reflects into taping or the finishing crowd anyways, where there's, you know, everybody supporting each other and stuff. It's really doing good, man. I think just because the toxicity of drywall yeah. talk was probably, I was never on that. But yeah, uh, I would, like I said to you, I was doing some research on the history of taping tools. It's a pretty good place to go for some stuff, man. I mean, you got to cross-reference it with the actual people from the company, oh, yeah, from okay. the companies, just to make sure. But a lot of it is there's where there's smoke, there's fire. And that's what a lot of that shit was. And then, like I said, I tear, turn off comments. Yeah. Uh, just mostly it's nice shit. And then I'll keep them on. And if I'm getting like a 10 nice ones, I'll be like, okay, this is good. But just the last post again, I got some stupid, some dumbass and some stupid shit. In your comments? Yeah. Well, it's like, uh, like, here's a picture of like probably the most epic job I've done in my life. I'm super hyped on this. I'm never doing this again. Right. And uh, some some j jerk off is like <laughs> Mark uh, North Star. Mark, Mark's like thumbs up. Right. And then some jerk ass response. To him, I've been waiting for North Star tools for half a year. What's going on? with this? And it's just like, are you serious right now? Yeah, this is my post. Bro. Are you okay. hitting me right now? It's not even about a box, man. Yeah. D the DM. It's yeah. just so inappropriate. You know what I mean? It's like, OK, don't use this platform for that it's like a private account anyways like fuck off i'm being super like very not jesus ish right now and that's okay because he probably forgives me well he does i bring it out in you so you do west too i have the mouth of a sailor when i'm around him <laughs> <laughs> um get a gatekeeping it's fucking toxic and i'll tell you another thing that's toxic okay. Um, you know, I could not imagine what it would be like to be a woman in the trades. Yeah. Right. Like, it's hard enough to tape. It's hard enough to go out there and just do the damn thing. And then to have, and then to be objectified. That's the whole thing. So think of every bullshit that thing that's ever happened to you online and then add all that shit on top of it oh it's ridiculous it's, it, you'll, yeah or you're just that. you're going to work underprivileged like yeah. you're the second you walk on that site it, it, i don't think guys understand this i don't really think that i started to really take a uh, care about it until i had daughters you know, my oldest daughter's 10 yeah. i've had a lot of time to think about this and i just don't think that guys understand it's it's kind of like uh Tying one of your arms, spying your back. I don't know how to articulate it. It's just, it's not like walking into the site, scratching your balls, mixing the mud up and going to fling the thing on the thing. You know that there's slime balls on those sites. Yeah. You know that you're going to get marginalized. You know, you're going to, and I, I'm not going to say where. Okay. But in the last six months I was on a site, <clears throat> there's a girl taper. There's five of us there. Okay. Right. Obviously I'm doing the uh, important stuff. <laughs> out of the five of us okay out of the five of us and everybody else is doing the other stuff right yeah and they stick her in the worst spot ever it's a staircase it was so bad and uh whatever she's new on this on the site new to them anyways you got to pay some dues doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman yeah. they're okay. just like you were not going to marginalize you you're not getting preferential tr uh, treatment either right Anyway, she finishes her thing. Amazing. Oh, so good for us for a stairwell. And I'm, uh, you know, I'm doing my thing. I, I know the foreman. And I go up to the foreman because there's still a lot of shit left to do here. Or there, or there, there, whatever. And um, I'm like, dude, 
man, why do you got this? And, you know, I got to know him and he, he asked me, the finishing wasn't his core trade, right? He used a drywall man with finishing. So I'm like, dude, she's man you gotta stick her whatever in the reception area yeah. you know stick her in like the main hallway that's like super important her finish is amazing right they didn't do it they didn't do it they let her go and they kept the other guys who sucked i i couldn't understand it it yeah. just made no sense to me i wish i had a chance to talk to her you know but there's the there's a catch 22 too right you don't know who you're dealing with you don't know what they've been through. That's a big one. Uh, man, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm the first guy to tell you that if I see a female on the site, I'm I'm pretty apprehensive about it, man. I'm not going to say hi to her the first day. I'll wait five or six days. And then when I do say anything, it's usually going to be about her work. And I'm still going to be fucking worried about it. Yeah. <laughs> right? I don't know. What about you? It's so... Uh... Women in the workplace began with me because I was leading teams and I saw kind of all the hard things to do with that. Like if I had um, a, a trainee that's good, I'm going to spend a lot of time with them. But now that there's women in the trades, how that's going to be like perceived weird. You know, but I don't know. There's There's a lot of like sexism still happening of course where you know you're the little helper like jenny was just on and she was talking about that or you're going to be objectified right there's this thought process where it becomes a joke right or it's like ha 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 i'll be as inappropriate as you or whatever but that's i don't know i don't think that helps no 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 because then you start getting some may get some mixed signals and that's the whole thing and men are really fucking stupid and like i don't know i just i envision this fucking world where everybody just gets to go to work and they only judge you on your fucking work right and it's there's an older generation that's still around that got swatted at for doing anything other than being perfect and it was like a man's place when those people are all retired, all of this shit will it'll stop. Mm -hmm. I don't know, man. Yeah, the woman, the it's the, so hard to have those conversations. Like, I, it's it's you know, I I'm a man of God, and I also live my life off of probability theory. Yes. So, uh, in today's climate, if you just don't say anything to a female on the job site, you're not going to get yourself in trouble, right? If you do say something. I don't know what the probability of of of, of her uh, misreading that is, yeah. but I know it's not zero. <laughs> so my it, the second fucking line in our slogan or whatever you would call it is treat everyone the same. Mm -hmm. And I don't care if you own the company. I don't care if you're a driver. I don't care if you're a laborer. I'm talking to everybody the same. And I ask for the same amount of respect from everybody on site, high and low. But it, it is like... <sighs> It's a little scary sometimes where somebody could totally ruin your brand without you doing something. That's terrifying. Oh, yeah, for sure. And that's why it just comes back to probability theory. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you know, a lot of things, a lot of stupid shit. You can say a lot of stupid shit. Yeah. You, you can slander people. You can defame people. And they're cool with it. Trust me. I know. I've done it. I did it for many years, and uh, but one thing you cannot do, it's my it's in my my rule book. Anyways, there's the the rule book is this, on especially in life, but especially on the site, no racism, yes, no sexism, yes, no homophobia, mm -hmm. right, and uh, that's pretty much it. Yeah, you, you just know? treat everyone the same. I mean, um, now I would say I would probably add a fourth in there and just say like, don't go around judging people because they're religion. Yeah. The Muslims? What's the Muslims? Yeah. You know? What is that? What is the Muslims? Yeah. To be Muslims a religion. It's not a... You're not a fucking... This isn't a... <laughs> They're talking you know, about most You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the, holy smokes. Uh, and th that's just kind of my rule book. And yeah. I mean, if you, if you... if you I don't care if you're gay, binary, whatever. You want to identify with a watermelon i do too baby let's go come on
Yeah. You know, like whatever, whatever, man. It's the same thing with being on a site. Okay. I'm on a site. I've been on, I have worked because I'm very, I am like, a, the, I, I am, the, I, I'm a drifter. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like I don't, I don't like we're bounty hunter. I don't like working with anybody aside from a handful of people more than one job because eventually people think that they have you under your thumb. So I just like to mix it up, keep everybody honest. And, um, and, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's just one of those things where they need us more than we need them, man. That's for sure. You know what I'm saying? At this point in the game, if you're running slim and you're you're running with a with a low overhead, so you just do your thing. I have no idea what I was fucking talking about. Do we have a like quick smoke break? Is there a button? Mm, maybe just, just edit it back in. I have Ableton. I'm... And we're back. Yeah, so it's just, it's super, it's a really easy concept because things with less moving parts don't break as often and you can abuse the shit out of them. Uh, Bent handle. Right, so it's the difference between like having a, a, like a super fancy bike with gizmos and gadgets and just a little BMX. Well, naturally the mountain bike with the disc brakes and all the weird carbon fiber stuff on it is going to be more susceptible to stuff. There's a place for both of them and I use both of them, but... Um, but you know, I'm an old school kind of guy and the fixed handle with the very, very first flat box handle I ever bought was a four foot, uh, Ben Columbia. And I don't know, it just, I didn't know anything about the tools really when I bought them and it just made, just made, no, I did it online. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. It's funny. I bought my stuff online. Then I realized CSR was in Vaughn. It was so funny, right? And so I called them. I'm like, hey, yeah, I wanted it so bad, right? So I called them. I'm like, hey, can I come pick it up? And they're like, eh, no. <laughs> it's like, okay. But anyways, I digress. It was the first uh, handle I ever bought. And I just looked at it. And I was like, well, you have like an extra little bendy part. So it just looks like you could, I don't know, look easier. And it is. And for uh, vertical, verticals, because you're getting that higher arc. Right. And for... um ceilings because you don't have to stand right under the box you can kind of throw the box over your shoulder a little bit and really see what you're doing um and the brake feels different now i'll tell you on uh the extendable handles the sh- i use a short uh, i use a short extendable handle Same. for um everything that's horizontal and under you know four and a half feet everything else is the, is the bent a long bent handle really yeah. right that little extendable handles fantastic for that and i i don't know that i would want to have like three different small because i would need i adjust my handle size on that thing all the time you're in a closet you're here you're there yeah right uh so it has its place but they're finicky man and one thing that i've noticed it doesn't matter what brand it is uh because i've used most of them is when the extendable handles first came out i don't think high capacity boxes were around Right. And what ha- what I notice happens to extendable handles over time is when you have a full, say you have a full 12 inch uh, high capacity box. Right. It has a tendency to want to pull the, the rod down and you'll start seeing it where if you flip your handle over, you'll start seeing where it's wearing. And that's because that weight of the flat box is kind of like creating, the, it's creating friction on your little rubber, uh, your, your little... Uh, rubber uh, grommet or whatever that thing's made of and so you i don't know how many fixed handles regardless of the company that you're going to see in the repair shop versus extendable handles it's it's especially if you're on a budget man i mean beggars can't be choosers you know i i learned on a four foot bent i was doing everything with that i was doing walls with that i still see homies using a four foot fix and i'm like good for you man because it's hard yeah you're making your life a lot harder but that's going to make you a better taper because if you can figure out how to pull it with just a fixed four as soon as you get onto like a a a mini or whatever it's like you're like oh this is a piece of cake right um and uh I, they have the they have a non fix, but I don't know. I have those. I just don't, haven't really ever haven't ever really used them. Uh, the Columbia Bend special to me, though. I don't know. It's just something about that handle. You know, like 
it's thinner it's a thinner it's a thinner tube like you were saying so when i first got it i i used to really like things to be very rigid i don't want tolerance because i'm pushing into something i'm having to overexert but when you're doing high stuff ceilings nine foot ceilings whatever from the ground you know 10 foot stand-ups from the ground with this thing <clears throat> once you get halfway down that joint because it has recoiled the, if you i don't know that i have those videos up anymore but if you look closely enough you can really see my flat box on a nine foot stand up by the time you get to four and a half feet it's autopilot man the recoil just wicks whips it down the wall it like saves so much energy and that's i used to post these videos i mean i don't work that way obviously it's for the gram yeah totally right yeah. but i it's just to see hey this is what you can do with it i mean i don't yeah. do this with it but this is what you can do yeah and that's how it can be so quick because you're not going to fatigue yourself because say over like four joints it's on autopilot half the way down on those four joints you know when when you use tools like that that's why you can keep going that's why you can go the distance and keep your stamina right mm -hmm. um i just love them i like i like the big box plate on, on a fixed handle old school fixed handle has that big box plate you got a bigger you have a bigger surface area now there's obviously like something to be said about a thinner box plate pushing at the top arc of that pressure plate obviously physics is going to tell you that's that's going to be a little bit easier but i don't know i just there's something about having that bigger surface area that i like especially because when you're doing something like bead you can really manipulate and bend that to f even though it's a fixed box you can still say so you got to fill that left side which push more on that side of the box plate that, that handle of yours, how it goes like this, it's got that like five degree left or right. Did yeah. you do that? That yourself? was a, be you, know, you ever watch Bob Ross? Yeah, of course. Beautiful accident. Yeah, that was yeah. one of the most beautiful accidents that ever happened, so man. It's technically broken, and that's why it's... It is, br it is yeah. Like, it was, it's I mean, perfectly broken. beauty's in the eye of the beholder. Yeah. To me, that's like just... Yeah. You know... The drywall uh, gods upgraded. I was, you took the words out of my mouth, the will of God. Yeah. Right. And there it is. And so I figured that had happened to me in Sudbury. Probably, I forget how long ago that was. Mm -hmm. you know, a year, two years, two years, two years ago up in Sudbury that had happened. And uh, I was like pissed at that. And then um, I'm like, my, my, my little, my little, uh, you know, my little Allen key screws are just there in there, man. They're, they're welding in their base. It's like, this is not happening my the cast you know where you get uh anything cast cast aluminum comes out a little bit burry they try their best but they can't tumble it i don't think they can tumble those things just because they'll probably break off yeah and so yeah that gets down good you get the nice flex on it and there's this thin rod it's a thin aluminum rod that runs through it and i'm convinced that it kind of stretches out or the holes or the linkages they must stretch out a little bit but I, over time because i have like five of them yeah okay and i only really use two but every once in a while i'll pull one out for whatever reason and i'm like oh this is like i don't like this and then i'll go on mine and it's just like a sloppy this like slap <laughs> yeah i like it man i'm just like hey you know i'm gonna go with this and um i just I've never had a problem with them. Like I, I was saying, like that thing went for five years. Yeah. You know, five years, man, five years. But again, I mean, I'm not saying you keep, I, I wouldn't recommend just using that, you know, uh, but it's what I use. I like the very thin thing. I just like what I can do with that. That tilt that you're talking about was definitely an accident. Yeah. At the time we were doing a bunch of R and D for a nail spotter. <clears throat> okay. Uh, that's kind of kind of got put on the back burner, but we were going pretty hard. And one thing that I realized was, you know, I'd always known um, the reason why a nail spotter arm is flimsy is because the surface area of the nail spotter is very small. So if you didn't have tolerance, it'd be very difficult to get it on the wall. You'd be putting it on, you'd have to take your time and get it on the wall nice and square before you pulled it. Because if you didn't pull it perfectly straight, you're going to start getting ridges. And that's why it's that allows for your body to not be perfectly straight and square and you can move around well we don't have that with flat boxes and to be quite frank with you unless you're ocd about being straight you don't really need that yeah because the box kind of stabilizes itself with the axle mm -hmm. right um and so yeah i just started rocking it i mean like my skill set inside i was really happy with where i was 
before I went to Sudbury, but anytime I work with Brian or around Brian, I've just got, I've worked with him about three times. I just get better. Yeah. The guy's just, he knows so much shit. He's like the taping whisperer. He can tell you, like I was saying, he can tell you these things. He'd tell you one thing and you are, you had 99% of it, but you needed that one thing. And it's like, bam. Yeah. Um, but anyways, yeah, I was up in Sudbury working around Brian, not necessarily with him, but, um, and, uh, yeah, no, it just, I put two and two together. I was like, Hey, hang on. Cause I'm, I'm like, I don't have time to fix this. I just have to go. And I'm like ripping it. Yeah. Like, what the hell's going on? I'm straighter. I'm faster. And I don't, you know, this is great. And then, yeah, I just sort of put the two and two together. And now I'm like preserving that <laughs> at all costs. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, and the reason why that works and the reason why that would never work with an extendable handle is back to there's not as many moving parts. Like the only thing that is holding, it's just a thin piece of metal up and in there so yeah. I can twist. And that's why I, you could never have it. I'm, I, I, I know Mark, so I shouldn't say never, but you can't, you can't have an extended bent handle. Yeah. Because inside of that handle, there's a linkage. It's two pieces of uh, metal that are attached with the linkage. And because there's it's not a pinch break there's no weird shit it's just a thing that's it's just a pulley system right yeah. and that's why i'm able to be able to twist it and then so now that i can twist it i don't have to set up quickly i can just start ripping it yeah, just slam it and then likewise on the ceiling sometimes you know i want to move a little bit away from the box to get my point of reference i can do that now right um beads it's really cool for because if you've ever boxed bead from a long handle you'll know that your first pass you're not going to fill some of the deeper parts right up against the profile well now with this i'm literally i have my handle and i'm literally spinning my handle yeah. because i know i can spin you're hugging it in. i can spin the pressure to the right side of that 12 inch box and i can do what i need to do and just instead of just constantly pushing on the same spot where there's probably an air pocket or something and that's why i'm not able to fill right um so yeah, totally beautiful accident. But that was two years ago, right? And yeah. I mean, forever in a day, it was like, hey, this is such a fantastic idea. Like I should tell somebody about this or like, let's show somebody this. But as I've watched the whole scene over the years, what I find is 95% of the time when somebody comes up with something, including myself, yeah, it's a really, really, it might work a fantastic for them, it might be a game changer for them. But a lot of times it, it works for their process. And there's a hundred ways to do it, as you know. And this industry is one of the most, it's probably the most niche tool markets out there, but they still have the same startup costs. They still have the same, they have the same taxes. They all have the same shit as the big boys, but they are in a very niche market that's right. oversaturated. Um, so they are not really in a position to just start making tools that are going to help even 50% of the, 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 the finishers. Um, and I, it's been nice to see them, everybody kind of just hang on a second. We don't need to come up with all this gimmicky shit because I can, I'm not going to, I don't want to put anybody on the spot. I don't want to make anybody look bad, but I can tell you right now, three products that have come out and were pushed that nobody talks about now. Nobody cares about now. Right. Because it was so nichey. It was just one of these gimmicky you know, call now for four easy payments of, uh, I'm, I'm going to say what it is. It is what it is, yeah. you know? And, uh, and, uh, it, that's why I stopped. Yeah. Well, this works for me, man. You know, I don't even know how you would do that to be quite honest with you, because the second thing you take off those screws, it's just going to fall right off. I don't even know how it happened. Yeah. I could re-engineer it if I wanted to, you know, but there's been uh, many, many of ideas many a little tweaks and twinkers where I just came, I've seen so many people come out with shit that just doesn't pan out or in retrospect, it's like, well, that's how you finish homie, you know, like, and it's, I don't really think it's a good business model to be making extremely niche tools. That's not really going to help anybody, especially when you're in a niche market. What, how many flat boxes do you intend on buying in your life? I mean, like what do you, I, you buy a lot of hammers. Yeah. You shouldn't really have to buy a lot of flat boxes. So they're they're in a bit of a weird spot. I think they're all crazy. Yeah. Probably I, like why would you <laughs> let me find the hardest tool market to try and make it in? But I suppose they could say the same to us about finishing because it's one of the hardest things to make it in, right? 
you know, look at HVAC, man. You're 85 bucks an hour, five years in. Yeah. You know, like you are doing here. You got to like what you're doing for sure. I love it. Yeah. You definitely have to like what you're doing. I like, cause like I said to you, I like the situation. I like being successful at something. Mm -hmm. Um, and I like the freedom and I like that, uh, Mandalorian bounty hunter vibes yeah. that I get that because I don't have bosses I have clients yeah but this is a one-time deal after this I'm on to the next bounty you know what I'm saying yeah. and I really like having that that control I like not feeling like I'm pigeonholed or I use this term very 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 lightly which maybe I shouldn't but I like to not feel like somebody's bitch yeah yes Right. And so this, our, our, our trade uh, provides that for you, you know, if you're good, because a lot of people aren't, they suck. I sucked. You still kind of suck. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you mean though. Yeah. It's, uh, I mean, man, basically a full year of, of just doing it. And when I'm going to places like Illinois, you take a look, or like anywhere that I'd go, I go, I shouldn't say Illinois, but you take a look at work that's passing and is passable and like, great job. And you're like, this is awful. I think when I came back, I was in, uh, I was in industries that had a lot more competition before. Yes. Okay. So when I came back, I'm like this, like seasoned, worn just about every hat you can in construction. Right. Now I'm going back to where it all started. It's like, oh, this is easy. Mm -hmm. I'm dealing with a bunch of incompetent people who are just looking at their paycheck. This is my competition. Is these schmucks? This is pre being good, right? And I just, it was just like super duper easy. I kind of like that aspect about it because otherwise, like when you're in an industry, you've been in a different industry before. Okay. That industry is the same one we're talking about, your former yep. life. That is a tough gig, man. That's a tough gig, right? Um, but uh, this is just, it, it's good. I, I've i tried to leave. I just, I'm not, I can't, I guess what it is for a lot of people is you can do other things. It's just your time isn't worth as much doing other things. Right. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. like, I'm going to be 40 this year, maybe in like, I don't know when I'm like 48, but it's like, you know, drywall doesn't, you don't, whatever the shit and cliche is, you don't choose it, it chooses you. It's so fucking true. Except for you. That's right. You chose drywall. Some <laughs> <laughs> people the money that I was giving up to, to start drywalling again. They're like, why? Because oh, it's dope. And I'm I like, thought you were so fucking stupid. I'm like, yeah. this guy is an idiot. Hey, let me ask you something. Because it, it just came to to my thought process did you make custom shoes with vans no if you go on to the uh i think converse does it too i, I, I it, did it with it nike converse, I, think. I made watermelon shoes one year did you yeah if you go on to the uh the vans website you yeah. can do custom shoes um uh, if you go they're cheap too like i think that pair is like 130 bucks yeah um if you go if you the nike ones i did like air force ones they're watermelon colorway they're like a buck fifty Converse does it. Uh Vans does it. Yeah, it's 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 pretty rad. It takes it takes some time to get to get your stuff, but it's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm gonna get those. I I mean, like I'm not like that, I'm not about that, but I just liked I liked how my logo kind of like wrapped a midsole. Yeah, I was like, this is fucking ridiculous. I was like, I, was like, I gotta get these. <laughs> That's why I had to ask you about that. Yeah. I was just like, mm -hmm. man. Yeah, no. Yeah, you see, like, um, hmm. Yeah, it's what it's one of those things. It's like your branding and, and your marketing, and dude, where it's just like I've, it's, it's such a waste, eh? Such a waste. I'm like, I do this thing, and it's just like, nah. And I, I don't know, man. It's like one day, who knows? Who the hell knows? I put my thing on my story today about uh when i you remember you were around when this shit was happening when i there's threatening me with the legal oh, litigation yeah and then that's when i started that shell corp yeah. for my instagram i butchered the spelling in my thing but i challenge anybody to 
pipe in the Instagram story app for an hour and a half with no spell check or grammar check and not make it take you all night without having spelling errors. I challenge you to do that because most of you can't and most of you haven't tried to do it. Okay, so kiss my ass. So Steve from Whippy Drywall the other day, I tried to tag him quickly on site on sanding day and I, I put down whitey whiter drywall or something. It like, I don't know what happened there, but I didn't, I never proofread what are you proofreading your shit for yeah they'll figure it out yeah yeah i started to do it uh over the years yeah um but i'm a bigger audience than most of the i don't i don't i just like to think it's it's really strange because it's a private account That's most of the time i'm greasy i shouldn't say that this is what this is my scam okay i i disappear because i can't de deal with it i just i have i'm doing other things man like i'm i, I try and skateboard and eat shit all the time so yeah. like that but anyways, um, you know, you would like have just great information in my opinion. And some some guy would like you missed a comma, a period, and a capital A. Yeah. So as I say, actually, you know the person who said that to me. Oh yeah. Um the person who said that to me's name was Ray Pasta. Ray Pasta. We used to work with him. Okay. Jay lost us. Well, anyway, okay, okay. Great guy, right? Great guy. Yes. Good guy. Yeah. Sweetheart. Beautiful voice, too, by the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he does, eh? So I said to him, I was like, Ray Pasta, mm -hmm. you're fantastic at spelling. In fact, you're a good writer. I know you are. Oh, and I'm good at and 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 I'm good at I'm good at taping. So we can't be good at everything. Yeah. Right. So if you ever attempted to tape, I wouldn't really, really ridicule you. I probably would, but I'm going to say I wouldn't. Right? right. So you're really great at spelling and I'm really good at construction. And when the whole world ends, yeah, you can spell and I'm going to go forage and build shit. Right. And when I see your shitty thing, yeah, I'm going to be like, when I see you did shit. that wrong. <laughs> see ya. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'm just long, very long winded, but you get the point, right? Okay, it's fantastic. Like you can't, you're you're not going to be good at everything. No, you're not coming here to be good at everything. This isn't grammarly. Like this, you're not coming here for that, man. But it just speaks to you know people. Not him. He's 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 a good man. Yeah. Was I? I, I haven't seen him in years, but that's right. Spaghetti uh, Ray or whatever we said. You're a cool guy. Yeah, but um, some people are just looking yes. for what's wrong. Fucking right there, right? Yeah. On your in your content, it's never because they're succeeding, and it's never because they're happy. Yeah, in your job, people, people. I've known a lot of people like that. Mike, the very first words out of their mouth, it's either filled with self doubt about themselves, they're right. doubting somebody else, or they're pointing out the negative instantly. They're judging a, a whatever, whatever the thing is on the five percent that's wrong. Yeah. You know, those are people you just have to stay away from. In in my, I won't work with you. I don't want to work with you. You don't want me to start pulling apart your shit, well, cut, cutting up your shit. You know. Um. But yeah, man. Yeah. We went from the bent handle. I don't know how we got here. So that's how this podcast works. That's the story. That's how my life works. You know. That's why I like it so much. You just fucking get talking about whatever. Yeah. Some people are super weird. Yeah. When they're being interviewed, and a lot of people don't, I, you know, I take I you probably do this too. I take for granted the ability to talk in front of a camera yeah. or on a microphone. I mean, I don't do this 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 thing very often uh, without being weird. Okay, you know, I'm sure you you've interviewed people. Oh yeah, people get weird. Well, because they're not used to it, and they know, and now it's starting to mess with them. Like, oh shit. Just say and all oh, and God. ten people who li listen to Sean's podcast <laughs> just can't, are going to hear this. What's <laughs> that? Literally say this. No, nobody listens to this, and I say, I say it all the time when people get weird, and you're just yeah, like, okay. yeah. yeah. Don't, don't worry, nobody. Mom um, thinks it's cool. Don't worry. Oh man, you know who I saw? I'll tell you the only only of my drywall podcast interviewee things I'll listen to. Uh, that I've listened to is uh, I listened to uh, the one with Lydia. She I don't know who the heck she did it with. Yeah. I have no idea. I just saw Lydia there. Nick's. Yeah. No, I don't think it was Nick. Oh, this was recently. I don't know who this is. I don't think it's a drywall person either. It's just, just a construction. -y. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And uh, I love listening to her, man. She was so great on here. Uh, oh, yeah. Did you do one with yeah, her? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'll have yeah, to listen to that. Earliest one. I'll have to listen to that. I'll tell you something. I remember uh, Lydia was a brand ambassador with me in 2019 and she got on. And I would have make, in my opinion, from 2019 on, she's done more for that scene yeah. than anybody else, man or woman. If she she's the voice of that awesome. whole thing right now. Yeah. Uh, and she's probably the best person to do it. So as a joke, I had a list of people that I wanted to have on the podcast. Was I there on the list? I never got the you, invite. You didn't want to come on the podcast. <laughs> the fact that you came on the and you wanted to, I was like, okay. I was waiting for a trap. Better, yeah. Like a bear trap to go on. Or um, I better better take advantage of this. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm still fucking kind of pissed at him, but fuck it. We better take advantage of this now. <laughs> <laughs> I just got lightheaded. Uh, yeah, but I, when I asked Lydia to be on, she couldn't have been more kind. Like, it was unbelievable. It just uh, speaks to how, how important pushing the trade to her is, because yeah. when you started, you probably didn't have much, you know. Who the fuck was I? Can I have an hour of your night? And yeah. I oh. her much time. She was like, as long as you want. And yeah. Had a great conversation. She's fantastic. Nice. Yeah. Absolutely fantastic. Very cool. Yeah. So I, I'm I I feel like super hyped to have been able to watch from uh, the beginning. Yeah. Well, I remember when we, we she had like two thousand followers, man. It was wild because she was so genuine and she just ran with it. And that's <clears throat> I would way rather have a first of all, if someone's going to speak for my profession, I would way rather have a woman do it than a man. Yeah. Right. If they're going to speak to it or be the voice of it, like she is. Men are stupid. Yeah. I just, we have a tendency to let our egos get the best of us, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm not saying that women don't do that, but uh, she is just certainly, um, and I have never met Lydia uh, face to face, but she's very humble. She's tiny. Is she? She's so little. Well, when she won't... walked up to me. I was like, oh my God. I know you keep small but mighty, man. Like she's rich, just rips it, right? I'm super talented. Yeah. yeah I was a yeah. little. Yeah. Yeah. Lady is solid, man. Yeah. I'm I'm really I was really hyped to to be able to watch that. Um I really wish that I could have gone back and hopped on just to watch when and if I understood who all the players were back then, you know what I mean? like just to yeah yeah like i like what i was saying to you like i see what you guys your guys is kind of like generation of drywall internet yeah. it's like you guys are like and not that we weren't like we didn't have camaraderie yeah but you guys are like but there's no uh competition right no We're all for one there. and one for all kind of deal yeah and uh yeah i mean in, i can't speak for everybody else right but for me i didn't really see that level of community yeah I mean, there was definitely community there, but it was more like kings and queens. Yes, there was like the the the, the pop the cool you said the cool kids. Yeah, and then just everybody else. I love using that right, word. right. And uh, I wasn't. I was a. I was a straggler. Like my shit. Like I think when I got on, I had like thirteen hundred followers, and like by the time I got rid of that account, I had like five thousand, maybe six. Jesus. And then I started the new one, and then it's just like I started new one very shortly after. So the new one's not really new. Yeah. Right, it's from 2019. I want to say this account um, because I, like I that it's private. By the way, I think like people are choosing to listen and follow along, and like they're, nobody's stumbling upon. Yeah, it. like I said, I'm a bit of a slime ball. Like if I have a post, if I have a post, I will unprivatize it. The account. You're fucking hilarious. Drop the post. Yeah. Right, because you never know. Yeah, yeah. And uh, 24 hours later, private put the throw their account back to private um just because uh i don't really have anything to prove yes to myself to anybody else it's it's a it's a it's a it's a really cool collage of my journey through getting good at auto tools if you go down to the very first all my posts are work i got rid of most of the shit got rid of most of the reels yeah certain things that are like really really pivotal very important to me like the multi one when that was released that was so important to me you know um i'll keep there but for the most part it's just my body of work so it's just a really cool collage of my and you can see it go from like yeah um 
And I don't, I think that whatever you do, man, it doesn't matter who you are or whatever you do, you're going to, if if you gain any kind of traction or you're, you're, you're I don't know, whatever, what do you want to call it? Flavor the mother popular, like you're going to ascend to a certain point And some of us plateau pretty quickly, like myself and then others, it just seems like the sky's the limit, like Lydia, right? Yeah. And so I think a big part of having the whole experience of being part of the social media uh, constructive one is knowing when you've plateaued and not trying to hang on to that. Otherwise you end up like the guy who graduated high school and is hanging out at the smoking section. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like it's drywall guys and you're a person doing drywall. And with the exception of a select few, like some of the people I just, you have to know when enough is enough. Yeah. It's like the, the the rappers from our era, like from the 90s and now they're like 60 and they're out like, oh man, I don't want to remember you this way, homie. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, dude? You're not cool, man. Every and either am. Beard is cool, bro. I don't want to hear. There's an exception. Method man. Why do you think I look at my hat? Why do you think I this, yeah. I'm like he's rocking them? I'm pulling them back out. I got like a bag of these things, the crack hats. Did you guys call them crack hats? We call them crack. Like, so but there was a jungle scene back. Oh then. yes, yeah. these were the. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm rocking them. Yeah, I like don't talk it. about ecstasy pills on my body. It's I feel like coming Nobody here, like coming here to this podcast, I have had to like be very unholy. I know. And dude. I've sworn a lot. And I like that. I I was driving here and I was like, I'm doing you of your these things. Every once in a while, you have to come back. And man, I'm driving here and I'm like, you know, it'd be really cool if I just didn't swear the whole time. Yeah. And I blew it. Sorry. Dude. I totally blew it. Uh, no, it's okay. There was this, I forget, there was this parable or something where um you gotta blend in with the sinners in order for them to see the good in you i don't know i'm butchering this i don't want to butcher it but you know uh, these chameleon names <laughs> and that's why i bring it out of you okay so i i don't i don't do podcasts and the last time i did it was like i don't it was uh oh no it wasn't nick's it was yeah nick and um and uh shit i lost my train of thought no you were thinking the other guy not nick no 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 i don't know no well, yeah okay. i don't know we'll get back to it yeah i just uh i'm really really glad um to i'm, I'm really really hyped to have been able to reconnect with you yeah me too because i missed you i missed you buddy i did i was like man this guy I gotta cloud chase this fucker now. I was like, geez Louise, like maybe he can get me some work or something. I gotta call this guy. <laughs> uh, yeah. And uh yeah, I don't think I would have done what I've done in the last year without your absence, though. Do you know what I mean? No. Like it was like the come on, because I feel still feel like the world's biggest piece of shit no. for doing what I, I did. Um I don't know. It was like this. It was like I was waiting for someone or something to kick me off the edge of the cliff that I've been standing. After I apologized to you, all yeah. I could, the only way I'm now at this point, I'm like in crises mode because yeah. I'm like, how can I rationalize what I did to myself? Because he's not going to forgive me for a bit. Yeah. I'm like, well, at the very least, I know he respects me. Yep. Regardless. Oh, yeah. oh. And I always respect you too. I just had, you know, I had a bad day. Yeah and uh cross the line but i was like at the very least because i'm like i said i'm incredible how fuck how can i justify this to myself i hope that he at least looks himself in the mirror and finds that i'm not trying to cut him down but just to be like you got to start taping yeah start you have something here yeah you're you have a gift i don't know what the fuck it is because i haven't seen you tape there's something there right now you're gonna fucking blow it if you don't go in tape, I forget what I said to you. Fake it till you make it only last. So I said some fucking <laughs> stupid shit years like years that, years. right? Yeah. Because I that that I felt that when I was doing my thing. Yeah. You know, not a lot of people know, but when I was doing those review videos and shit, mm -hmm. I had been in it six months. I had no fucking idea what I was talking about. No idea. But you're very articulate. I could articulate better than I could tape. That's for sure. 
Oh, those old videos of you smashing Caesars and just like going on talks. So brutal. Oh, I'm embarrassed about that. And it's all in my archive. I didn't I had... mean to bring it up. No, it's good. No, 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 no. It's Thank fine. You. It's fine. No, I mean, it's something, it's definitely something we're talking about because it's like a cautionary tale. But uh, I had no shame because I kept them. They, they were up for 24 hours. My favorite, I shouldn't say my favorite one. The most cringy one is it's, I'm in, in Cambridge. You've been, you were at my house. I had that circle deck. Yes. Remember the circle yeah. deck? Holy. <laughs> so I'm there. I don't know what the hell. I'm lighting fireworks off. I have sparklers duct taped to a 26 or JD. So I light the, the Roman candles, light the sparklers, start chugging the JD as the fireworks are shooting out of my backyard into the school grounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The kids weren't at school. And I thought that that was a great way to build my mind. <laughs> I did so much stupid shit. I look at this shit. I used to look at it and be like, hey, that was cool. Yeah. And now yeah. I'm just like, oh my. Why didn't anybody say anything to me? What would you do if you were lighting fireworks, chugging Jack Daniel off of sparklers, and people are still sending you thousands of dollars worth of tools every few months? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, but there's something to be said for work hard, play hard, right? If somebody's like, if if it's apparent that somebody's got a drinking problem or like this is every fucking day or like you're missing work or whatever, you got to speak up to those people. But like every once in a while, like I went to uh, Mexico in November and, and continued the stories and I was a fucking mess for a few days, but I earned that shit. Yeah. I'd be a big enough mess as I want to be on the days that I choose to. Yeah. But that's the difference right yeah. but it's like i don't know i don't think you got too crazy i suppose that is a little fucking out of control i got out of control whiskey and... man i don't but people wanted to watch it no right? it's... no one was doing it it's like i said to you like i didn't have i didn't know much about the tools i could bullshit anybody i, I, I could sell ice to an eskimo right so it didn't matter and i was being encouraged and i was being rewarded and it was changing my life slowly and so why in the hell are you gonna <clears throat> and it was i don't know if it was selling tools or whatever the heck it was doing but it must have been doing something and um and uh one one time uh, wolfgang's like uh, uh he's like uh you should leave before somebody takes you out the scene you're getting out of hand man really yeah, yeah. And uh, I don't know. I, I don't know when I stopped that shit, to be honest with you. I stopped Instagram for a year. I know that. Maybe that was around that time. I don't know. It's all kind of blurry. Yeah. Like I said, you though, I want to be that. I don't think anybody wants to be that guy in the smoking section. There's a few accounts that I think are timeless. There's a few. I don't want to put anyone on the spot, even though it's a compliment. But yeah, yeah. yeah. There's a few accounts out there. Very few. Like two. Yeah. <laughs> one's a man and one's a female yeah uh that are 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 timeless yes yeah. because they they're super down to earth and they have fantastic uh personalities i mean i vote you know from from what you can gather obviously yeah. met one of them a few times and in the the other obviously just through uh social um but you got to know when when it when it's your time and my i had you know what goes up must come down Totally. And then when it comes down, when you're not getting like, when you're not getting the the engagement or whatever, instead of like devil downing, yeah. it's like private account. You know what I'm saying? Keep your friends, right? And keep doing cool shit. Yeah. But, yes. How private is an account with? I don't know what I think. Like three thousand or four? There's like four. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, let's be real here. You know, probably a thousand people are real out of that. And then probably like fucking 300 people actually give a shit. Yeah. <clears throat> because, thing. like, you know, I don't pay attention much anymore and it's none of my business and I don't really give a shit because it doesn't affect me. I'm not in a competition. Right. But um, the paying for followers and the paying for likes, everybody gets the shit in their DM and some of you click on it. 15 bucks for 10,000 followers. Right. And then so you're going to get that as long as you pay. 
And the second you stop paying, you look like a dumbass. I forget who's, I was on someone's thing the other day. Okay, so you have 15 posts, 500 likes, and then you drop back off to 30 where you always were. And then for the last, whatever. Yeah. It's just, it's intriguing to me, right? It's it's just very intriguing, the psyche, because I, I'm i gatekeeping right now. So I'm going to just, just fucking... sorry, no, I am, right? I'm going to, I'm going to back it up. Um, you're only hurting yourself, right? Yeah. Because you're kind of living a lie in a way. And they, you're, you're, if they're telling you they're real followers, you're just believing something that you don't, you know, is not true. Yeah. And everybody knows it. No one wants to make you feel weird because most people aren't like me and they're just going to say what they think, you know? And so you're like, you're only hurting yourself. Like, well, who? And then you have to stare at that forever. It must be like this weird little prison. And I think that those people are worth so much more than that. I've seen people who were just, they were fabulous the way they are. And the, the thing about life in social media that are very same is people either like you or they don't like you. Yeah. You can't pay for friends. What did Homer used to say? You can't make friends with salad. Yeah. It's the same thing, man. Yeah. You know, Lisa, you can't make friends with style, right? <laughs> right? Right? Like they either like you or you it's either gonna work. You're either good at hockey or you're not good yeah. at hockey. That's you great. know what I'm saying? Like there's not not really too too much in, in between there. And it's the same with people. Like they're either gonna like you or they're not going to like you, or a lot of people are gonna like you, or you're gonna have like this little sub this little sub cult yeah. following where you all kind of share the same opinions. You know? know? And, and on the other hand of talking about that, if you are just doing it because you like to do it and like you just like Instagram and you just want to do it, don't ever be discouraged to not do it because nobody fucking likes you. <laughs> right. It's like if you're doing it to be fun, just have fun. That's that's initially what this thing was made for. And then it turned into a marketing device, right? Yeah. So it's like, you know, some people take themselves way too seriously. Yeah. And, and I don't know. That's the only thing about this gatekeeping is, you know, the kid that wants to just be a part of it is going to get bullied out of it. You know? Yeah, no. I it's It has to... If you're a gatekeeper out there, like I used to be, Take it from an X. Like, this is like, yeah. if I was making an Instagram story right now, this one would be like confessions of a gatekeeper. Nice. And I'll tell you, um, I didn't always gatekeep. It depended on the mood I was in that day, I guess, when someone would ask me a, a question that I've probably answered a hundred times. And there have been a few times, uh, more than a few, quite a few times. You know, I, I, I wasn't a dick. I was more nice than I was a dick, but you're yeah. going to get judged on the, you know, you're, you're in... And you're going to get judged on your wrong, not your right. There's been a few times, this one goes out to the gatekeepers, oh. where I have helped somebody. And then two or three later, years later, I'm getting a text a DM that I don't look at for another week till they send it to me. And then when I read it, it's like, Brad, thank you. I changed my life. And so <clears throat> the feeling that you get from that, for someone like me, where like things like that are worth more than someone giving me a tool. Like I rather get that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Especially if you, especially because I love Jesus and that's what Jesus would do. Sean, what would Jesus do? That's what Jesus would do. Yeah. And so, um, and the people, so it's like you, you know, like, so just by not being a gay, gay, gay and who knows, maybe in three years, that guy's going to be running shit. It's like, Hey, Brad, you want some work? And so you go from just showing someone this little, instead of being egotistical, yeah. just showing them this little tiny bit of, uh, you know, whatever, helping them, uh, kindness. And then uh, why would you want to do the other thing? Because right? you're too cool, cool for school. Yeah. Too like, cool for school. Why do you want to do that, man, to yourself? You know, I think there's also probably people, and I mean, when, when you were coming up, you, you were constantly being caught, brought up where everybody that I talked to had some sort of like a massive positive experience with you. And it probably just was some little bullshit thing, like what you're saying, like 10 or 15 minute explanation about something. And then it something clicked, but it was like, you make a big difference in people's lives sometimes. And like, you don't even notice. Yeah. You're the only one that's that like when I, someone's said, 
you know, I said to you before we did this, you're like, well, you know, like, well, I didn't, why don't you like never wanted to kind of do these sorts of things. And yeah. I feel like I'm boasting when I talk yeah. about my journey because it's been so like, I've had a horseshoe up my ass. Right. And so I don't want to come across as boasting, but no, that's always really nice to hear. I don't know, Sean, maybe I didn't listen to your podcast. I've never listened to your podcast. Maybe because I didn't want to, I was not that you talk about me. I'm not saying that, but maybe yeah. you did for three seconds. It makes me feel uncomfortable. Yeah. Like, I don't feel like that's me because it wasn't about, it was never like, now I can sit here and consciously know I'm helping people. It, I honestly, it was just shooting shit with people. Yeah. I didn't know I was going to help these people. I knew I had to do that shit and be part of the community in order to get the shit I was getting. Right. It all just kind of fell. It was pretty place. selfish. To yeah, play it's pretty selfish. I'm not going to lie. Well, you know, like, yeah, once the tap got cut, all that shit got cut too. It's like customer service is closed. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm not getting anything now. Customer service is closed. No. Yep. And then it just got to a point where I didn't want anything. Yeah. But I'm happy if people, because I, I, gate keeps so hard i turn comments off just because i don't want to deal with it on my stories stupid questions that people can just google although my dad would tell you there's no such thing as a stupid question yeah. and i beg to differ dad just get a drywall instagram account man it's not that it's a stupid question it's just you're being lazy because you can google it and i'm not your drywall dictionary yeah. okay I had a buddy that was the computer guy growing up and you would text him with a question and he would just tell you to fucking Google it. Like, yeah. figure it out. Like, yeah. just what do I, I look like? Your Rolodex. Or send me 20 bucks and I'll answer it. And the first couple of times, like teaching of a man to fish once or twice. Okay, so I hear it's different. Who talked the most shit? That's more interesting. About me. If my name's come up, has there been a person? You don't have to say who. No, I don't think there's ever been anything negative. They're on, afraid. On the <laughs> just, it's just about to say that's come up a few times where people are like, it's like he makes me nervous. And I was like, no, oh, he's a good guy. He makes me nervous. Yeah. But it in, you know, especially if nobody they don't know you as an individual, not your Instagram. It's a shtick to a certain extent. Yeah, you know. Like, how else are you gonna do like what am I gonna do? You yeah, know, like you had I was not talented. I don't know. I'm an artist, man. It's like performance art. You can see it. The art of the story. Like, I love that. And I do a freestyle. Like, this is not something that I'm like, stri okay, I'm going to do it. It's pure freestyle. That's why if you watch the timestamps, they're typically like 10 to 15 minutes apart because I'm freestyling it. And then you'll see people who are watching it. And I'm like, you dumbasses. Just well, give me 20 minutes and the whole thing will be done. Right? <laughs> like, the, you, you, you know? Every once in a while, I'll go on there and it'll just have an abrupt stop. And I'm like, God damn it. Yeah. yeah. You know, the art of the story. Jill, you know Jill. Uh, yeah. Jill is like, uh, she's like, that's your thing, man. Mm -hmm. you were, what, your that's, stories are so good. She's like, that's what you're good at yeah. is the story. And that's why I never went into reels or when TikTok came and, you know, cause my time really has passed when it comes to that, like posting my pictures. I, I was like the, the techno flusher. I was like this close to doing a review. Yeah. I was like, I haven't done this in two years because I'm so, so hyped on that thing. Right. Yeah. Um, it's pretty dope. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's just different too. And it looks like it's going to work. Yeah, it's definitely going to work. Um, but again, it's one of those things where uh, nothing beats an angle head. Yeah. And if you haven't finished, I'm not going to say me. If you can't, I should, I'll say me because they don't really use angle heads that much, I don't think. I don't know if the Australians use corners. Well, they don't do fucking corners. So how are they going to use fucking coin angle heads? <laughs> they use corners, right? Or whatever they call it. Right. So you can't touch it. It's a jig. Yeah. We spent an hour, you and I, talking about how all of these tools are just jigs and if you can wrap your head around that it all kind of makes sense yeah and a flusher unfortunately is not a jig and so what a carbide tip is going to do is at least give you the same uh apex or close to it yeah. as an angle head that will last forever. and yeah. and for me it's funny enough you know aaron i remember with that thing we went to and we all got cooked and left at like 3 a.m yes remember right so i remember uh i remember him saying there he's like yeah yo man the ogs 
that don't even sand the apex. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, okay. Cool assembler guy, whatever. <laughs> right? And so sure as shit, the next job, I'm like, okay, I'm going to do this. Yeah. He was dead right. Couldn't believe it. Instantly saved 20% on sanding fucking corners. All It all had to do with how, where, and I'm using Norsar, but whatever. It all had to do with where I was holding. Like, I guess that's what people... I will say thing. tool manufacturers will say things to me. Yeah. At first I'm like, it doesn't make sense. But then when I think about it, I'm like, how, okay. So that guy that he knew did that. So how, how could I do that? And so, yeah, I, I started um, holding my, the corner box would be more parallel with the angle head. And then I'm not hydroplaning whatsoever. I don't know. I just, I can really cup it and lock it in there. And he was right. The, the next, I had sanded, uh, pole sand the edge just because there's some bullshit here and there. Don't touch the apex, man. Just wipe out your brake lines, clean out your three ways. It's fucking beautiful. Wow. Right? You can't do that with a flusher because it has tolerance. It's just the way it is. It's not rigid. It's not like this plier that's, you know. Yeah, it doesn't just activate. Right. Like that wing is, that wing in your hand is is rigid. It's a one, it's like whatever, three eighths by three eighths square metal. Yeah. With a carbide blade on it, man. It only does one thing. An angle head doesn't lie. A flusher will lie. Yeah. Carbide tip flusher will lie. Angle head does not lie. Yeah. But an angle head can't do everything. There's a lot of things that it's, it can't do. Yeah. Besides, well, no, no, there isn't. There's not a lot of things it can't do. Yeah. There's a few things There's it can't do. There's a few specific things. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. How are you wiping your tapes with a with a flusher or angle head? Perfect situation. It's angle head. Yeah, yeah. Goes well, back to the what? Hey, this is a good one. We're not going to get all into the jig shit, but this is this is a prime example. the 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 point of a of a flusher is rounded, right? Mm-hmm. So you flush your tapes with a flusher, fine. And then you're going to pull a corner box with an angle head. Well, an angle head is not rounded. It's a point. It's a tip. It's a carbide tip. Right. So your angle head coat is having to fill in. We'll call it a bull nose. Sure. Now you have these newer flushers on the market and they can tell you whatever the heck they want to tell you, but it's not the same. It's not as pointy. You still got to sand the apex and it's rounded. And after two jobs, it's really not different. Sorry. After, after like, I don't know, five jobs, that flusher is really not the same. Right. You know? Well, you'd grind anything against the surface forever. It's just not the same shape at the apex. Like it's just... To me, it's like so simple. Whereas a 2.5 angle head, yeah. right? You 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 roll, flush your tape, that's sharp as shit. It's a jig. It planes and it flattens out the tape. A flusher won't do that. A flusher will bleh, 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 bleh. Yeah. It's like the difference between wiping no coat with a six inch knife and a corner cobra. A corner cobra flattens it out and planes it down so your flat box just rolls over like butter. You try and do that with a knife. If you didn't pull that no coat perfectly tight, it's going to, all those little bumps are going to reverberate in the coat. And when they paint it or whatever, or, you know, whatever. Yeah. Are you saying the piss? Out <laughs> right. Yeah. Or saying the yeah. piss out or whatever. Right. And so if you, um, if you just use jigs, angle head doesn't lie because it's a jig. And if you guys don't know what a jig is, just Google it. Yeah. You're jigging your tape on the wall. And now you're coming back. With a jig that's just a little bit bigger. It's the same concept as a flat box. Mm-hmm. Um, go and put on your first coat by hand, aka a flusher, and then pull a 12-inch box behind it. Your hand coat wasn't a jig, man. It's gonna be a pain in the ass. You're gonna be pulling shit everywhere. Right? Uh, so and that's why you will see guys who flush with 2.5s. You can't flush with a three inch. Maybe some people do, but that's crazy. Feel right. I well, yeah, you don't. You won't know. There's the other thing. Here's another one for you that really trips people out about uh, pulling tapes with a 2.5 angle head. You won't fill. And the point, you're not trying to fill. It's not like a flusher. Who gives a fuck if you fill? All you're trying to do is plane and flatten out tape because it's a jig. You just want your tape to be plain and flattened out. So if you didn't pre-fill that angle properly or if you missed a little part and you lose it, who fucking cares? You set the tape, you roll the tape, you pull it with the jig. It doesn't lie. It's only going to do one thing. If you're not pulling the sides, who cares? You've jigged it. It's planed and flat. When you come back with your corner box, it's a jig on top of a jig. It fills it in. There's no inconsistencies in a tape that's pulled with a jig. There is with a flusher. Right. 
And now the only the only exception to the rule when it comes to that, the only exception to the rule when it comes to that is a guy who's been using a corner flusher for 25 years. Sure. Or 10 years, whatever. Okay. But it doesn't take that long to learn how to use an angle head because you can't blow it. All people tear and rip tapes and they right. But once you figure it out, you can only push it in so much. You know, when you fully depress it, you run down the wall, you can't fuck it up. Yeah. The reason why people don't use them is because you can't, I would never, ever in a million years wipe corner tapes with an angle head if I wasn't using an auto taper. It, it makes no sense to do it with a, because an auto taper is putting on a perfectly consistent over the whole tape amount of mud. It's been calibrated and gauged the angle heads to kind of be the same size to accommodate that mud in ideal situations. <clears throat> right. And so in, in the rolling, of course, yeah. your roller is a jig. It's a big square piece of metal that you throw it down the thing and it's going to put that, it's going to set that tape where it needs to be. Yeah. Your 2.5 angle head's a jig. That just flattens it out. If you don't fill, who gives a shit? Your 3.5 is a finished coat jig that fills everything in. If you have a few little spots here and there because that one or two runs didn't fill, fill or feather on your 2.5, who cares? Hit it with by hand before yeah. you sand. Who gives a shit? Right. <clears throat> People get really tripped out about not filling on that tape coat. You're taping. You're not trying to fill. Right. When you tape, are you trying to fill the bevel when you tape too? Because that's stupid. Run the eight inch box. It takes three seconds. Yeah. Everything by hand sucks and, and, and you don't make money. You yeah. know, the second you have to pick up a hand tool, if you're a fully auto taper, you are losing money. You're just throwing it and pissing it out the door. You know, you, if you commit yourself to it and you, and you go for it on 10,000, if 10,000 is going to take you eight days, you should, in sanding is two of those days, you shouldn't be picking up a hand tool until the sixth day, other than to move your, your stuff, in my world anyways, you know, and uh, it wasn't always that way. Yeah. It's just so efficient though, when you get it figured out. All of these sorts of things in my life anyways, a lot of it happened by accident. A lot of it was when I was in a, put myself in a tight spot where I wasn't going to meet a deadline. Okay. Maybe a piece worker bailed on me or whatever. wasn't going to meet a deadline and now I got to work 16 hour days. And so just out of pure necessity, you're having to try different things yeah. in the hopes that it's going to be quicker. And a lot of times... You know, when your back's up against the wall is when you shine the brightest, man, and you can come up with some gnarly shit. And yeah. at most of the cool, most of the things that have helped me the most is that's how I learned them. Instagram and stuff like that's going to give you the basics and stuff. But these little things are just, um, it's when your back's up against the wall, you've overextended yourself and you're out of your comfort zone and you wouldn't do it this way, but you just have to try something because you're not going to make it. Yeah. You're asking to get kicked off. Then you got to start smashing holes in the wall. I mean, back in the day, and like that never works out nice for anybody, right? No. Or the old Durban 90 down the toilet. You're kidding. Mm -hmm. Hardens underwater. You pay me. Here's another one for you. The paper tape days, right? You know the bevel? Uh, not only paper tape, mesh tape. You know the bevel? You don't trust somebody? Lay a piece of fishing line in the bevel and then tape the tape and then code everything. Okay, and they can't see that little fishing line. If they don't pay you or they fuck you around, you go to the corner and you grab that piece of fishing line and you rip that fucking tape and those three codes right off the wall. That's amazing. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Today's episode is T by <laughs> Pay Your Bills. Bad attitudes. Pay your bills. <laughs> oh, man. I don't know what fucks their day up more, though. I think it's the Durban 90 down the toilet. 100% of it. Now, this is... You got to pick the fucking... Yeah, like... You got to get the floor open to fix it. I definitely would not recommend doing any of these things. This is like, you know, like pre-Jesus. Yeah. But, you know, back in the day, you sort of had to do what you had to do. Fewer discretion is advised. You had to do what you had to do. You can take the... Uh, we can start getting dark if you want. We probably shouldn't do that for... Let's days. just go. All right. Well, this is... You know, it's important to... Um, it's really important to be um, honest with yourself. That's you true. Know? So if they really, really... Back in the day, man, they really, really are messing with you. Do you know what a Schrader valve is in a tire? No. Is that the little push in? Right. And you unscrew it? Right. 
I don't know anything about. Them. So, um, you know those uh, like HVAC screwdrivers? The guys have those dorky little screwdrivers. Yeah, it has a little screwdriver on one side, and then this like slot in the end. That thing on the end is how you take a shader valve out. Oh my god! So what you do there is you don't want to hurt anybody, right? No, definitely don't want to hurt anybody. So you just um. I'm not I'm not condoning this. What we would do when we were chief sinners and pieces of shit is you would just unscrew the Schrader valves ever so slightly. Yeah. So their tire would slowly deflate. And they'd go to fill up the tire and then it would slowly deflate again. And they they wouldn't be able to they take it to try and find the hole. Yeah. Nobody could find the it hole. Be a hole. But the Schrader valve was that is like loose, the right? most obnoxious thing I've ever heard. Um, <laughs> on a gas meter side of a uh, building somebody's house yeah there's a little nipple right after the ticker so that means you pay for it you might hurt it's <laughs> so brutal if you just accidentally walk by with your hammer and uh their gas bill is going to be a lot and nobody better light a cigarette around that spot. jesus christ <laughs> man i never did any of these things i definitely didn't do any of these things but I worked with a lot of people that did oil paint. Remember when you could do oil paint? Oil paint. Oil paint. It wasn't just latex. You could buy oil paint. Right, right, right. right. Yeah, dump that on somebody's car who didn't pay you. All those gaskets get blown. Shoot, the car's almost a write-off because it's so, so much. Oh, we were doing this job in Paris when I was like 18 years old. Uh, me and my uncle. And we're like, okay, we're going to go. And we were spraying popcorn back then, right? I'm going to go spray this popcorn. And uh, in a subdivision, and this crew of uh, of uh, of um, guys, yeah, 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 framers, framers showed up to the house beside us. They were pissed, and they had chainsaws in their hand, and they were like hiding the fucking house down because the guy didn't pay. Literally, I saw these guys with chainsaws cutting the framed house in broad daylight, and then so my uncle's like, Brad pack up the machine we're leaving and we just fucking we never came back right where are you guys why are your framers cutting the house down man like what is going on <laughs> this guy doesn't pay his effing bills and it. yeah for a few reasons let's get the fuck out of there oh let's man just start that time yeah. next or... yeah no paris get paid yeah i remember where that was in paris too it was wild oh. yeah some people get heated man now I don't do any of that stuff. I mean, like, I never did in the first place, but, like... Those uh, subdivisions, not subdivisions, townhouse structures are getting torched. Like, that was happening, whatever, within the last two months. Well, in Burlington, we had some go down. Did you? Yeah. Yeah, but that was... I'm pretty sure that was, like, the welder. I don't I don't know him. Yeah. yeah, yeah I yeah. think it was something to do with welding. Of, and it was hot. That was a something when it was effing hot, remember? Yeah, okay. And dry. And uh, uh, yeah, I think a spark, you know, they put the hay in the garages or whatever, for yeah, whatever reason, for us to piss in. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and, uh, and uh, I, who knows, maybe some slag hit the, uh, yeah. the haystack and everybody, you know, it's just smoldering. Well, so when I was renting houses, they had a fire break. So you would finish like two or three houses and then there would be no house. And then there would be two or three more houses. Is that what they, I would always see that in subdivisions, but I'm just a drywall guy. I never understood. Is that what it is? Oh, it makes sense. Yeah, because if, if it's if three are going to burn down, it's not seven or 12. Or Got you. Or Brilliant. Yeah. yeah. But what sucks is as all these people are moving into their fucking houses, there's like one house here and one house there that continue to be built. I was up with, uh, I don't know if you've ever talked to Jay, Pinnacle Acoustics, fantastic no, guy, awesome finisher. I was up uh, in Niagara about a year ago doing houses and uh, he got one of them. <laughs> He got one of them and Jay drives his big, badass, loud truck. Dude. And he's an uh, early riser too. So he's ripping in. <laughs> the lady's like, You're not starting now. And I'm over in my thing. I don't have the fire block or whatever you call it. Yeah. He just went, I love Jay. He just went home. So yeah, I come back later. Okay. I would have been like, I'm never coming back again. I'm taking my tools and going home. Screw all you guys. Eh. Do you know who I am? Yeah. Uh, no, I never said that. I said it, God damn it. Tell me that you tell me you want to say, do you know who I am? Without saying, okay. do you know who I am? Do you know what do you know what is funny? Is Steve from Whippy Drywall has a few times been like, don't you know who he is? And it is like, I'm like, I fucking hate that you do that. Cause it's funny and I get that it's funny, but it, it's like you gotta know that people are out there going, look, 
Oh, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, if you're like, so for instance, if you're in a whippy, what to be drywall? Well, yeah, Steve. Wait, no, whippy. Where the fuck? Is it? I went to a Halo 2 tournament in like 2002 in whippy, I think. Yeah, whippy's just outside. Is it Toronto. the end of the 407? Uh, maybe. I've never been there. I think it's the end it's of the 407. Up. Yeah. For instance, okay, Aaron and I are in the supplier in his town getting some stuff for Nick when we were out there doing the Fresco Harmony thing. And Aaron from Columbia is standing beside his tools and the guy is talking to him like he's a fucking whatever. And I'm like, in a situation like that, it'd be like, can you fucking hurry up? Don't mm -hmm. you know who I am? Like in the back of your head? Yeah. Because he's earned that in that yeah. space. You yeah. know what I mean? But same thing with you, like waiting at a fucking store or whatever. I thought my crush or my... No, I'm... You know what's happened? I'm not going to say the place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to say the place. It's happened twice. One time is over five a few. I'm not going to say the place. I'm not going to say the place. I'm not going to say it. <laughs> So the person at the front desk um, is like relatively new and like I happen to know somebody who works there who's like, you know, they 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 basically run the thing, right? Yeah, totally. I've known this person for a very, very long time. Could be anywhere. Right. Listening. And I don't need to drive for a fucking hour to get stuff, but I really like this person. Yes. Yeah. You know? And so that's why I go there. I like this person too. And so there's there's new 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 person there. Yeah. And um I'm like uh, I don't even think it was a lot. I think it was like 10 rolls, five views. Okay, man. Uh and I was at now this was my this is all my problem right now. Just I want to predicate that. I was at the front desk, which I shouldn't have done. It there, right? And he was like, uh, oh, we're only giving two rolls to each person. And now I'm like being egotistical. Didn't I would never say that because I've never said that once in my life. Yeah. Right. I'm like, are you sure? <laughs> right. Oh. Only two rules. Yeah, yeah. We're only getting why. I'm like, I, really? Okay. I I'm I'm like, I I'll just call and I name dropped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'll just call my good because I don't think that he would agree with you right now. Yeah. And uh, yeah, obviously I got what I wanted. And then uh, the dude came over to me and was like super apologetic. And it made me feel like absolute shit. It made me feel like I said, do you know who I am without saying, do you know who I am? I did. Right? It doesn't mean that you felt that way. That's right? what you did. But I didn't no, mean I didn't. to. Yeah. And I felt like such a piece of shit. But because who the fuck am I, right? Like, it, yeah. like, who the fuck am I? Like, seriously. So what did I do? I was like, okay, fuck it. I think he gave me what I wanted. And then uh, uh, I just felt so bad. So I went on to Masters Building Supply. Okay. And I cleaned them out. I bought like fucking 180 rolls at like $3.25. <laughs> or something? Yeah. yeah. No, it was, it was 100, it's like 160 rolls. And I've never bought anything from Masters before in my life. Yeah. I don't know those people. Super, seems super nice. Like they've engaged with me online before, right? And, um, yeah, yeah. One of those moments you look back Super on. Super nice people. They seem like nice people, you know? I don't know. I have I've no never, idea. Never met them before. Same. Yeah, I mean, that's something that I focus on. My grandfather, when uh, he lived with my parents, I spent some time with him, uh, like, in my 20s. And he talked about regret, man. And like the things that you did in your life. And it's like when and he was alone for a while, his wife passed, like he was alone for like years and years and years. But like that regret, you got to live with all that shit. That's mm -hmm. why, you know, you got to try and do your best. But I don't know. It's those moments where you didn't really hurt anybody's feelings, but you're like, that was probably not as cool as I could have fucking dealt with that. Or whatever. I just trying to be more low key, like yeah. with my Instagram, like I, I don't know, man, like I'll dip for like, I was doing like a couple months at a time, then a month, and that's more like three weeks, four weeks. Then I don't know. I think I finished up that job and then I posted that thing. And so, like I was saying to you, I've been deactivating my account just because I like, you know, not regular life. I fucking, it's like, I don't know, man. 
I don't know. It's not like I, not a lot of drywall comes over my thing anyways, anywhere because I unfollowed everybody and then refollowed the ones I liked. And now it's just like skateboarding stuff and yeah. like good gardening and shit. And like the, the odd person will come across, right? If the birds, if I, yeah, feeding the birds, 100%. Yeah. If I'm, if I'm, uh, if I'm, uh, doing my, you know, the odd person will come across. And then, um, yeah, I don't know what happened this time around. I, th I don't know how long my thing's been back on now for maybe like a week or two. And uh, I thought about you. And, uh, <laughs> I thought about you, and I was like, maybe now's the time. It's been a year, you know. And, yeah, that year went poof. Oh, I know, didn't it? it? Did I didn't really do much. I I was counting on my phone because we were, we were catching up, and I, I was telling you, like, yeah, I'm not. I did po made twenty posts uh, last year. Five of those were in January, so fifteen posts. Wow. And then, like, a lot of those were, like, in the same month. So it would be, like, I finished this part of the house, so I'm going to, like, do the top part of, like, fucking 20,000 board foot. Ahead. So I'm, right? Yeah, I pulled it back. Less is more. I was, like, like I mean, I, that's some good advice for anybody right now. If you're on your high right now on social or whatever it is you're doing. Yeah. One of the biggest regrets that I have about my whole social media journey is like not 2019 whatever 2020 that a man i should have someone but if somebody would have told me in 2020 like yo dude it's not gonna be like this it's gonna be good for you but it's not gonna be like this forever right this is like your there's a bit more than five minutes of drywall fame but this yeah. is your thing like don't be nice to like be nice to people man yeah you know what i mean i would have done it a lot differently i would have capitalized on it more but you make your bed you lie in it yeah. you know what i'm saying and so all you can do is learn from that whole experience and just try not to let history repeat itself i, I mean i have obviously but i'm almost 40 and i'm so hyped like 30 sucked i don't know if that yeah. clicked for you yeah. my 30s are all grind man 40s oh i'm just like i made it okay People have committed suicide in my life. People have nice. just fucking blown it. This, that, the other thing. And then you start really counting your blessings. Because I'm not that smart. And guys like you and I aren't exactly fucking prize ponies. No. Nope. <laughs> you know, you know what I mean? So it's like, that prize poodle's over here. So like, oh, Lord. <clears throat> Jeez. And uh, there's not really much new stuff coming out. Anytime I see new stuff, it's like a bit of a tweak. I'm not putting anything, anybody down. It's an upgrade. Yeah. Like that thing there, I'm not going to say what it is. That thing, there's definitely an upgrade. Yeah. Hands 100%. But it's not necessary. It's not like something where I'm like, holy fuck, like this is going to help. No, that carbide tip, Fleischer, man. Yeah. It's like, you want to learn how to use angle head? You want to learn how to flush tapes with angle heads? And you don't know how to use an auto. Fuck it. You never want to use an auto taper, but you want that. Use that thing. Hell, you don't want to use an auto taper. You like flushers. Try this thing out because the tip, you can replace it. You can spin it three times. It's like having three flushers in one. And you know what the price point on that? It's like a buck 50, man. Yeah, dude. Now, twice. I mean, like it's not tide tested and like I, I, I mock something up. Right. But how long is it going to last? I don't know. But how long does a friggin' $120 flusher last for a production guy? Yeah. Like, if you're one of those guys who buys one of these flushers and you pump out, like, 500,000 words feet before you're changing it, I'm sorry, but I think that you're just, like, you don't have a good grasp on business. Right. Buy a new flusher every other job, man, if you're doing big footage. Why wouldn't you do that? Like, you wear them in. I understand all of that, you know? Movables. But it's like anything. It's like when I put a new blade on my box. And I'm like, shit, I should have done that. Like, I'm going to piss my pants. Oh, okay. Well, I have to have a cigarette. Okay, good. We'll be, we'll be, we'll be back again in a second. <laughs> okay, I, I hope these are on the same episode. See, so I just said something about fresco and and uh brad was like yeah it's because it's the only thing that you were good at you said it, one of the first things i jumped on was a fresco well, that's right. like really liked, really liked it really liked, liked it and i said it's because it was the only thing you were good at that's right so and everybody likes to do things they're good at so when we were out west doing uh aaron's dad's place um he take to his dad takes a look at this and he's like oh so it's like doing drywall really poorly and then i was like yeah that's why i'm so good at it 
Is that Bernie? Yeah. And he's like, why the fuck are you in my house then? No. no, no. Um, but like he, he he was he loved it. He was fascinated by it. Oh, I love to meet Bernie, man. He's, he's cool, man. I love is I love to meet Bernie. That guy's a seems like a G. <sighs> seems like a G. Because one thing about Columbia you can't you can't take away from them is like they have the biggest brand recognition. At this point, uh, like it's tough to say globally just because of tape tech and their history yeah. with the Ames brothers since like whatever it was, 1956. When it was the biggest one when it was only one year. I want to say 1956 was the first auto taper. Okay. And the thing weighed like 500 pounds or some shit. Yeah. yeah. Right. I would have done great back then. But other than them, they uh, Columbia definitely um, has the biggest brand recognition and is one of the smaller companies. Mm -hmm. Um so that says a lot about your efficiency yeah. as a business. You know what I'm saying? And obviously, like, you have uh, guys like Mark in the same yeah. province who are even s smaller uh, manpower operation. And uh, look at, you know, I, I don't know, man. I feel like uh, it's like uh, not many people in my life have talked shit on my work. Yeah. A lot about me. Yeah. And uh, Mark's the same. It's like, I don't know. I don't think he looks at it like a like a tool. I think he looks at it like a sculpture. He's like sculpting yeah. something. A representation. Whenever it. someone's gotten super frustrated about, well, I can't get this stuff. Um, it's like, I try and articulate it this way. You know, and I use Columbia Tools. I'll say, uh, because it's to each his own and everyone's different, right? But, uh, Columbia Tools is Harley Davidson, right? Cool. Awesome marketing, wicked product. They're pumping it out. You want it? We got it, baby. They're, it's awesome. Influencers. <laughs> Anyone who calls themselves an influencer is not cool. <laughs> uh, um, um, and uh, and um, uh, North Star is more like like a custom motorcycle shop. Yeah, Keanu Reeves made it. You know what I'm saying? It's like this is this is like we're just doing some like been so we can't produce this because it takes a lot longer to do this shit. Not saying one's better than the other, okay? I have my personal opinion that works for me. Yeah. You know, and that's just the bottom line. Everybody likes to mix everything, but it's it's pretty incredible that these guys are like next door to one another and like to have that impact though in that same kind of like region something in the ground yeah it's something in the water right um there's something there's definitely uh something there but yeah man i don't know like uh i wonder how long this has been i wonder if it'll even tell me it won't tell me that's so fun i'm tired and you have to work tomorrow bro 100 percent. i'm gonna try and snow skate like uh I think that we should try and do this quarterly, man. I think that would be cool. I'd be so down for that. I'm just such a lazy. I'm like, he's already got this shit all set up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just, just, come, <laughs> just come get cooked ah. quarterly. <laughs> yeah. We'll purge you your uh, swear words for the next quarter. Yeah. I'm going to try and be better next time. We can think about something else to talk about. But it was super it was fun. So random, dude. It was within three <laughs> days or whatever. Yeah. I like that. I like that kind of shit. And uh, Me too. I like to uh, talk. I'm better at talking than my smelling and grammar. You know, um, we talk like this for like two or three hours before we started the podcast. Yeah, but we, this isn't like, it's not like, a, like, this is like, this is, there's just a microphone in front of our faces. Like, yeah. we would do this in my backyard. That, that it, was the birth of the podcast. Yeah. What's it? I've told it a million times. Oh, really? I haven't heard that story. I want to hear that story before we go. Okay. So that, night that I i'm can't... gonna so i think i already said it on this thing i'm gonna say it again i don't drink yes i haven't drank in a long time like i had a caesar face for like a year and then the, that was gone yeah and so the last time i actually did drink that would have been a year ago yeah and it must have been it was I, with me bro it was no it was with you it was february yeah. and i don't drink but it's just something and when i'm with you yeah. When I'm with you or Wes for some reason, yeah, if, influence, dude. if if we're gonna if we're gonna be responsible, we're not driving. Like you guys usually stay at my place, yeah, right? Yeah, um, yeah. Like 
I'll, I know I can go. Like, okay, we're getting bombed, yeah. right? Yeah. And uh, the safest place in the world is around me, buddy. He can... Oh, a hundred. Trust me, I know. <laughs> and um, so so uh, we drink the two four. Yeah. Before nine, yeah. we're like shit. It's not even nine yet. So luckily, you can walk to the beer store. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, right. So you can walk to the. I think we went to the liquor store. Yeah, well, uh, almost closer in that little uh, subdivision. Yeah, there's a beer store and a liquor store there, and it's like a ten minute walk. And then we drank that. And yeah, so I like totally digress, but that was the last time I drank. So we get plowed at the table, and we're just talking, and then you explained um, like butt joints or something. And then I sat there and I was like, man, if we were recording this, you talked about the golden handcuffs that night. There was like a bunch of good stuff that were talked about. And then I went to my buddy Judd's place the next night. Same thing. Got him fucking killed, too. Like, I don't know if I was on a mission that yeah. weekend or what was going on. And we stayed up till three in the morning drinking like um, craft beer. He's a craft beer guy and did the same thing. And I started talking about maybe I'll start a podcast. And they were like, what would it be like? And then. And then we just talked for four hours about yeah. nothing. And I was like, that's what the podcast is going to be. Yeah. Yeah. It was your backyard that started this whole obnoxious thing that you're wrapped up in. We were just like, <laughs> <laughs> we were just podcasting. Yeah. Uh, they're there. Just like it. Up. Beating shit, bro. It's good because I don't swear this much. Yeah. Um, and so it's good to get the swear words out here. And so when I'm in out in the wild, I'm not, uh, I'm not ripping, but you know I'm hyped and thanks, and I'm I'm really happy uh, to I'm really happy to see you again. Yeah, I missed you, buddy. Cool, man. All right, everybody, be humble, treat everyone the same, and do your fucking job. <laughs>